Do you remember Axios? It was the thing that we used for most of our fetch calls back in the day, back before fetch existed. Yes, I know, for a lot of us more modern devs, the idea of not having fetch in the browser is kind of insane. But also remember, we only got fetch in Node somewhat recently. And in things like React Native, we're still getting it. Axios was popular for a reason. It was the most reliable and consistent way to fetch data from a server on the client with JavaScript for a long time. Well, it's been a long time and fetch now exists, is normalized and it's become the standard. And as great as it is, and believe me, fetch is so good. It's awesome that we have this standard. It's still not perfect. In fact, not only is it not perfect, it's actually got some downgrades from the experience that we had with Axios. But since it's a primitive, since it's an actual standard, we have a great opportunity to iterate on it a bit, to fix some of those weird edge cases that we don't want to have to deal with. I've known about fetch alternatives for a while, and they're not really alternatives because they all wrap fetch, but I haven't bothered exploring them too much because I've just dealt with the weirdness of fetch. But one caught my eye, and I wanted to take some time to explore it with you guys, as well as the pushback. So I find it all very interesting. The library I'm talking about is one called Kai, K-Y. It is a simpler API. It will treat non-200 codes uh, responses as errors, so you can actually try catch on a fetch. It includes timeout support. It can retry failed requests. It even has better TypeScript support, specifically for JSON resolving to not any. Because man, .json on a fetch response, I've seen so many people do stupid things with that. Ugh. So here's the example that he gives, where on the left here, we have get to do's, which fetches. If no response isn't okay, we throw, and then it returns as JSON that we then manually cast as promise to do. And we have the add to do with the method post, headers, content type, application JSON. You get the idea. We've all had to write code just like this. You know what? I'm going to ask chat. How many of y'all have had the problem where you forgot to put the content type in the error confused you and it was annoying to debug? Ones in chat, if you've ever been hit with some weird quirk because you forgot to specify the content type. I expected more ones. Still a decent number, but I expected more. To be fair, I'm streaming pretty late right now, so not as many people as usual. You're still getting a decent number, though, because this is a very, very common mistake, and it's one I and others have made far too often. So having that be the default when you pass something in it is very nice. And here are the functions on the Kai side, by the way. So instead of this fetch, throw on bad response, return response to JSON with the manual binding, kai.get slash to do's dot JSON, and you can pass it a generic type of to do. That's so nice. And post kai.post to do, and you pass it JSON as the second argument, and then it knows to change the content type to JSON. And it knows we're posting because we did kai.post and kai.get. So no more specifying the method, which I've also forgotten far too many times. And then the .json call again with to do as the type just inferred right there. It's so much more convenient than a lot of these things, especially if you're dealing with error or like bad responses. This is very nice. I like this a lot. So why are we not all using it? Well, uh, I think this tweet from Dax will be a fun thing to riff on for a sec. I can tell how senior you are by whether or not you include stuff like this in your code base. He did numbers on this and I liked it because honestly, I feel that if you install every single one of these little helpers that you see, your code base is not even going to be JavaScript anymore. And the benefit of fetch isn't that it's the perfect thing to write with. It's that this code is code everyone's going to immediately understand if they write web dev code because we all know fetch. It's the standard. This will work everywhere. This will behave how we expect. And it's dumb, but like our AI tools are going to generate this code better as well because they're familiar with it. This is different. And as shitty as it is to say, different is a type of bad. Just by being different, you are making something slightly worse because it's not the thing we're familiar with. So in order for that to be justified, in order to make something knowingly worse just by changing it, the amount of benefit has to be great enough to justify it. And I don't know if this falls in that bucket for me. That said, it is a very exciting little depth and I wanna dig in more. I, I found their GitHub. I'm gonna give it a star because it's interesting enough for me to do that, but I wanna dig in. Kai is a tiny and elegant HTTP client based on the Fetch API. It targets modern browsers, Node, Bun, and Dino. It's just a tiny package with no depths. Very important. It is tiny, tiny. 3.3 kilobytes minified and gzipped. So not something you have to worry about in terms of the bundle bloat, but definitely a thing to worry about in terms of the, the cognitive overhead bloat that comes with it. But the things it does are very nice. Simpler API, 
The shortcuts for methods is really nice. It retries failed requests. I don't know if this is a default. If it is, I don't necessarily love that. But as we scroll, we can see here, const JSONs await kai.post. Yeah, all what we would expect. Here's all the things you have to do to do this properly with HTTP errors. That's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Simple enough that it's a very short readme, honestly. I want to find the retry thing. Like, what is the default for retries? Retry default is two times. So by default, it retries twice, which is an interesting thing to have built in. Don't love that. I'm going to compare this to something interesting, something y'all probably know I like a lot by now. It's React Query, otherwise known as Tanstack Query. React Query, I would argue, is hard to avoid if you want to make your React code pleasant to work with and you're doing anything async. It is very hard, especially if you're fetching from something. You should probably be using React Query. I want to find an example of how painful it is to write fetch properly without React Query. I'm just going to chat GPT it. Obviously, I had to ask ChatGPT to do this for me to see how it would do. And here we see the complexity of fetching data in a component in React. If we have a user ID prop, that's a string, and we want to fetch this, we have our use effect where it's being fetched. Fetch user data, async. We try, we set loading to true, we await for the response. If there's no response, we throw an error. There is a response, we JSONify it, and then we set the user to that. We also set the error to error, and we set loading to loading. But there's a mistake here, actually. This code might look totally fine, but if the prop changes, this might set the wrong state. If we start with user ID 1, this fires, but it takes a while. Then we change it to user ID 2. That fires, comes back immediately. This set data call happens later for the first one than the second one. Whichever one responds last is what state you're going to see. So this is code that can result in some very unintuitive bugs. So I'm going to tell ChatGPT that. This code has a bug when user ID is changed. If the second request takes less time than the first, it will show stale data. Fix this using the guidance from the React docs. Oops, spelled docs wrong, whatever. Is mounted. Not what I would have called that, but sure. The solution here is you have a return function in the effect, which will clean up whenever this instance of the effect runs. So we set is mounted false when user ID changes. So if we happen to result and get the result from the first one after the second one, we won't set it because we check this is mounted before we do it. Not beautiful, not elegant. And the result is look at all of this code to do this. I'm going to just throw this in my editor quick to showcase how insane this is. So we have all the React imports, user profile, all the states we're setting ourselves, the fetch call, all this data processing, everything else here. We have 39 lines of code just to like do basic stuff with the content that we have like fetched here. That's kind of insane if you think about it. The fact that it takes 39 lines of code just to hit fetch in a safe way with a prop. React Query makes this significantly easier. I'll just show you. I don't have React Query on this project. It's not even a project. There's just a file I'm working in. But const data error is loading. It's not going to be use user. It's going to be use query. And this will have a query function. Cool. We're done. React Query handles all of those cases for you. If the user ID changes, this will handle it. I do need to give this a key so that it knows that it can be shared in multiple places because this is actually really fun. Well, again, what it, I didn't think this was going to be React Query Rant, but it is. If I wanted to have this called in multiple places and only fetch once, I can export const use user profile and just return this in here instead. And lines are hard, okay? You have to turn that. Nope. I keep saving, but this isn't a real file, so I have to manually format. Cool. And now I have this use user profile hook and I can call this in multiple places. And it will only have to fetch once because the key makes sure it's using the same result in multiple places. It just, it makes life so much easier. And going from 39 lines of code to four, most of which are just like single line, like open close brackets is a night and day difference. And it also improves the performance, also makes the quality of experience for users better. It also prevents like duplicated requests. It also prevents bugs. So even though, yes, you can just use vanilla React, you probably shouldn't. Most of the time, if you're doing something like that, if you're manually checking error and loading states, you should have just used React Query. So why am I talking about all this? 
because the gap of doing it the vanilla way relative to the experience of doing it the React query way, bringing in this dependency is huge. Doing it vanilla is massive and doing it React query is simple. It also prevents potential errors and mistakes. It also can improve the performance. So there's three massive wins with the cost being you're not using vanilla React anymore. How does Kai fit in here? Well, it doesn't really solve many errors. I did show earlier with the tweet from Corey that like, We've all made the mistake of forgetting content type here and there, but that's not that big of a deal and you can fix it pretty quick. It is more code, but it's not 39 lines of code to three. It's like three lines of code to one. So the, the win there isn't as big. It doesn't solve caching and those types of things. It doesn't have anywhere near as big of a win to move to key, Kai, whatever I'm supposed to be pronouncing it, over fetch. The difference is smaller. The performance wins and the potential quality of experience wins aren't meaningful, but the size of the depth is also much smaller. So you have to weigh these things when you make these decisions. The gap from vanilla React and using use effect to React query is significantly bigger than the gap from using fetch to using Kai. In fact, to showcase what I mean, I'll switch this over to Kai. So we have Kai.get, here's the URL, and we don't have to do the dot then, we can just dot JSON it. The cool thing here is because of the way the type definitions work, it'll actually be much nicer. So if I did like user, user, cool. That will just work, which is really nice. But that's not that big of a win. Relative to the size of the win going from use effect to React query, the size of the win going from fetch to Kai, significantly smaller. So I think we need to consider that when we make decisions around these things. Not saying Kai is bad. I'm saying it's not as obvious a win as something else that you might use might be. So my concern with what Dax tweeted here is stuff like this is a very vague range. It's a very vague set of things because you could argue React Query is like this because React Query is an abstraction over use effects. So you don't have to write the effect yourself. And I actually saw this a lot in the comments, people saying, yeah, this is why we should write our own fetch calls. No. In the React ecosystem, you almost certainly should be using React Query or something like it. The gap from fetch to this is not big enough to be considered the same thing. So while I agree with Dax that there are a lot of things, likely including Kai, that might not make the most sense for most projects to include, we shouldn't use that as a blanket thing for things you could do using the vanilla primitives. Because so often, these abstractions exist for a reason. React Query exists because it was too hard to do this without it. Kai exists because the reading fetch calls is kind of annoying. <laughs> Kai does not have as strong of a need to exist, but it does exist for a reason. The people who built it built it because the ergonomics around fetch kind of suck and it showcases how much so. I think this is cool. I'm actually probably going to try it out at some point, but it's not that big of a win. And I personally would not judge somebody for including this or for refusing to. But if somebody refused to include React Query because you don't actually need it, I would not want to work on their team. So that's all I really have to say on this one. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Until next time, fetch wisely.